I heart, get ready. Fantasy football is here. Welcome to the Scout Fantasy Show. ScoutFantasy.com is home to the Fantasy Football World Championships and the best players in the world. Real money winners giving their secrets to help you win. Now exclusively on iHeart. This is the Scout Fantasy Show with your host, the one, the only, Dr. Roto. Dr. Roto from Scout Fantasy Sports and welcome to today's podcast. Um, I want to discuss a couple of things today, but uh, firstly, I want to discuss what happened with Fantasy Aces. Now, many of you may or may not know of Fantasy Aces. They uh, were, as of today or yesterday, they were a DFS site. We all know FanDuel. We all know DraftKings. But there was Fantasy Aces. Now, I like to refer to the DFS sites uh, like soft drinks. So I will call FanDuel Coke. I'll call DraftKings Pepsi. Right? Because that's the market share they have. FanDuel's Coke. Coca-Cola. Biggest mar- market share. DraftKings is like Pepsi. People like Pepsi. People like DraftKings. But it's not FanDuel. But like Fantasy Aces was like Shasta. Or White Rock. Or RC Kohler. And all these other people are trying to come in and get scraps. Maybe Yahoo is making an inroad. Maybe Yahoo's like, I don't know, Sprite or 7-Up. I'm not quite sure. It's different. Maybe it doesn't have the uh, the caramel coloring. But I guess I'll put Yahoo in there. But all these other things are cola companies. Like, you know, Fantasy Draft and, you know, Boom Fantasy. And these things are just getting started. But it's very hard to compete. Against Coke and Pepsi. They dominate the market. And just recently, the guys at Fantasy Aces declared bankruptcy. Now, they thought they were going to be bought out by Fantasy Draft. But Fantasy Draft realized there was something amiss. Well, turns out, here's what was amiss. Seems like they were taking some uh, people's money and using it to run their business. That's a problem. That's what we call illegal, right? That's what we call illegal. Are there going to be criminal charges? I don't know. I don't know, but we call that, that's a big problem. And why am I discussing this today? Because I want to discuss it at a whole about the industry. Daily went through a huge travesty last year with the whole Ethan Haskell thing. Right? People not trusting daily fantasy sports. People thought that it was not on the level. I mean, we were inundated with ads. And then it was regulation all over the place. Right? And we have a lot of the rules now that we have because of what has happened in the past with daily. Right? Consumer confidence was crushed. And the state said, whoa, hold on, gambling, I'm going to make changes. Sweeping changes. Some states have even gotten rid of daily fantasy sports. We know that, right? New York allowed it. They wanted some certain things to be changed. That really helped. That really helped. But this doesn't help. This doesn't help the industry. When a company takes people's money and uses it, that's not good. That's not good. We have to trust that sites don't do that. That there's an operating account and there's a prize pool account. And they're not commingled. Otherwise, it's a big problem. It's a huge problem in the industry. This cannot happen. And it can't happen in an industry where daily is so fragile to begin with. You don't think there are a lot of people in Washington right now that want to get rid of daily? I mean, maybe now with Trump coming in there, they're worried about other things. But there was a time when we know that during the presidential elections, the primaries, they were talking about uh, daily fantasy sports. How ridiculous was that? But right now, we've got to work on, I don't know, customer confidence. But let me give you a tip. Let me give you out there a big tip. And I'm going to pass this tip on to you as it was passed down to me. So, 
I don't know, about a year and a half ago, I can't remember exactly when, I was winning a lot of money on FanDuel one night for baseball. And I think it was like, I don't know, $1,500, $2,000, whatever it was. And Tommy G, because we were doing our radio show at night, our Graveyard Shift radio show on Sirius XM Fantasy Sports Radio, he said to me, Doc, take most of it out. Leave only a little bit in. I was like, really? Why would I do that? Take it out, he said. He was right, wasn't he? And I'll tell you this. I've been to Las Vegas with Tommy G, which is an experience in itself, by the way. And when you're there, I watched him do his lineups. And you know what he did? He was on the phone with the bank transferring money into his account. Why? Because he didn't have money in his account. Smart. Very smart. And I would encourage you to do the same. Here's a rule of thumb. Why don't you put enough money in your daily account that you are willing to lose? Now, I'm not saying anybody's absconding your your funds. I'm not saying that. I'm not saying anybody's doing anything like that. But look what happened in Fantasy Aces. Could it happen elsewhere? Sure. I'm not saying it will. I'm just saying it could. So if you've got $5,000 in your account somewhere... I'd be taking that out right now. And how about putting $500? Because God forbid it's gone tomorrow, you'd be pretty upset if you lost $5,000. I'd be pretty upset if I lost 500 bucks. Right? I would be. But I'm telling you, protect yourselves. Protect yourselves. Now, do I trust DraftKings and FanDuel? I do. I trust them. I think that they have, they've been... Through the, through the ringer and back. All right? They've hired the best lawyers. They've got regulation. I get it. That said, I still would pull my money out. If I, if I won $5,000 tonight on DraftKings, I promise you, promise you, I take at least four out. At least. Maybe more. Maybe $4,500. But probably at least four. I would. And you know what? I put it back in as I needed. I think I probably would take out forty five hundred, leave five hundred bucks in there for spending money, right? I encourage you to do the same. You can't be too careful with your money, can you? It's your money. You can't be too careful with it. I want my money when I want my money, and I want to transfer to me when I want it to transfer to me. It's simple. If it doesn't get transferred to me, I'm not happy. But I don't want to wake up in the morning worried if it's not going to be there. That's the worst thing. So this is a real problem in the industry. It is. And I feel very sorry for people who have now woken up today and realize that their money is gone. Because let me tell you something. You're not getting a cent. You're not getting a cent. Ask the guys from Wyckoff. How much have they gotten when Wyckoff went bankrupt? Nothing. You get nothing. You get a letter in the mail apologizing. You know what that does? Nothing. It's sad. It really is. It's a sad day for the industry. A, it's sad that people had to close. But it's B, it's sad that they, well, for lack of a better word, stole. You use money that's not yours. You know what they call that? Stealing. If it's not yours and you didn't get my permission to borrow it, it's stealing. Now, there may be reasons why you do it. You're trying to keep your company afloat. You're trying to stay on because you think you're going to be bought. I get all that. Doesn't make it not stealing. Still is what it is. Still is what it is. So I'm just throwing it out there. Word to the wise. Be very careful with your money. And if you're playing daily, don't leave a lot of it in. Leave only amount in that you're willing to lose. Imagine this. Imagine if the site you play on closed tomorrow. If it did, how much are you happy to have in there that to have lost? 100 bucks? That's the number you should have. 17,000? Well, that's up to you. You must be my rich friend. I know I couldn't do that. But if that money disappeared tomorrow, what would you be okay with? I want you to think about that very carefully because I want you to keep your money. It's your money. 
You earned it. Whether however you got it, you earned it, didn't you? So that's your money. It's a very sad day for daily. And I can only hope, I can only hope and pray and pray that this doesn't affect the daily industry anymore. Now, look, I'd still fix the daily industry. I'd get rid of multi-entry altogether. 150 lineups? Crap. How about 50? I mean, really? Is it just me or is it every time I go on to a, a tournament, Sahil Sood's got a 1,000 teams in there? And do I blame him? Of course not. He, he's just, look, you give him the rule, he follows it. 150 teams, puts in 150 lineups. Gets the algorithm going, boom, 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 boom. But I'll tell you this, I kid you not. Staring in front of me right now are a dozen lineups for PGA, which I'm doing by hand. That's right, by hand. Old school. Old school. I take a pick, but you couldn't see it on this podcast. Why am I telling you this? Because it's a statistical nightmare. I've got a dozen teams I'm trying to figure out how many guys I have on each team. Could I do that with 150? No way. So when people can import algorithms, use algorithms and import statistics from computers, it skews the playing field. How about 25 lineups? You want to be a big idiot and do what I'm doing for 25 lineups? That's fine. But these sites will never do that because they want your money. They want to make money. They'll never lower the multi-entry. But they should. Oh, but they should. Because multi-entry only gives you more chances to lose. Not win. Single entry, mano a mano, your team, my team, love it. And you know what? You want to pay more for an entry? I agree with that too. We were just talking this morning to Jason Rouslin from Fantasy Golf Insider. And he won, he had the thousand dollars, it was a thousand sixty dollar entry last week in golf. He won. Good for him. Congratulations to Jason. Strange thing was, my number was higher than Jason's. But I was playing in the three dollar donkey and he was playing in the thousand dollar tournament. Now you'd say, Dr. Roto, why don't you put up a thousand dollars? Because I didn't want to. I don't have a thousand dollars to lose. I got to pay for summer camp for two kids. I'm just saying. But good to, good for Jason for winning. But he paid up and he won. I wish I could do that. I wish I could have taken my lineups and put them everywhere. I'd be my own rich friend today. So, but multi-entry is a problem. 150 lineups isn't better. It's better than 1,000. I remember when Max Del- Delari, which was his name back then, had 999 lineups in the Millionaire Maker for golf, and he came in second and won $100,000, and he profited. If I'm not mistaken, he was up like $60,000 in that tournament. Smart. Unfair, but smart. But unfair is un- un- not right to say. Because it was fair. He followed the rules. I don't have to agree with them. But this industry needs to continue to be fixed. It does. And it won't be fixed if we don't complain. See, I always bring it to this point. If you don't want Tom Cruise to make $20 million for his next film, do you know what you do? Don't go see a Tom Cruise film. They won't pay him $20 million. If Tom Cruise is in a movie, Jack Reacher, and only five people go, you think he's going to get $20 million for his next film? Not a chance. What? He gets $10 million. Nobody goes. He gets $5 million. Nobody goes. He's not even working anymore. But if you pay to see Jack Reacher, well, then Tom Cruise is going to get his $20 million. That's how it works. So you can be angry about it, but when you still play, what are you doing? Who are you helping? Nobody. Now, unless you go into it like I do with $3 in a dream, I'll put in five lineups. 20 bucks worth, 10, seven lineups, whatever it is. And I'll say there's my 20 bucks if I win, great. I can go to the lottery too and hit the Flamingo lottery and hope to win 10,000 same. I get that it's a lottery. 
Most of the time I'll break even, come out a little bit ahead, and there I go. I go to play the next week. Maybe I hit it big, maybe I don't. Maybe my $3 entry hits 30, 10 times my money. There you go, boom, I'm back in business. I was up. But that's how it works. But the daily industry is not solved. Not when things like this happen. This could open a critical door and ruin this industry. We can't afford mistakes like this. As a fantasy industry, we cannot afford this. See, people like season long because it's their friends. They talk smack. They love it. But when it borders on gambling, people don't like it. Right? They don't like it when it's gambling. It's good when it's fun. Bad when it's gambling. It's such a fine line. And it's bad when it's gambling, even worse when they're stealing. Gambling bad, stealing worse. There's nothing worse than that. There's nothing worse when you lose consumer confidence. And there's no money. Because it's been taken by the owners. I mean, are you kidding me? So just be very, very careful. Please, I beg you, pay attention, watch, learn, read, be smart. It's your money. This is a horrible day for the industry. It really is. I'm glad we talked about it on this morning's radio show. I am. I wish more people were concerned about it. I really do. I wish we had more people talking about it. But I think people are so burnt out talking about daily fantasy sports after what happened last year, they can't even stomach it. And all we need to do, really, is get our congressmen involved again. That's just what we need. I don't think so. These people can ruin everything, our congressmen. Getting involved where they don't need to be. Do you think I want government involved in fantasy sports? Please. But they will be. When it's gambling, when they're stealing, when there's overall stupidity, we open the door for it. So do it the right way. Hire somebody. Regulate yourself. Otherwise, we're done. Otherwise, we're done. You say you're going to do something, you do it. The Fantasy Football World Championships, we say we pay you within a month. We do it. Scott Atkins sits by his computer making sure that everybody gets paid. Because if we don't pay people, people won't compete in our contest. We don't. We lose the, the support of our customers. Nobody comes back. We want people to come back every year. We want you to know if you win, you will get a check. You need to know that. You need to believe in that. If it doesn't happen, you lose confidence. You lose confidence you won't play. And we want you to play, and we want you to have fun, and we want you to win. Speaking of winning, you know where the winners are. They're at scoutfantasy.com. You enter the promo code ROTO, that's R-O-T-O. You pay for one month, you get two more months for free. You get access to the Team Outlooks by Sean Childs. You get access to PGA. You get access to NHL DFS. You get access to our NBA Team Optimizer. You get access to our message boards. You get these podcasts. You get our articles. What more can we do for you? One month at a low price, you get two more for free, three for the price of one. It is a no-brainer, and baseball's coming up, and you got three of the top guys, Adam Rona, Sean Child, and Dr. Roto, doing baseball for you. What more could you want? I don't think anything. I don't think you want anything more. But when we come back tomorrow, I'm not here Friday, but tomorrow, I'm going to do my Super Bowl podcast. I'm going to let you know who's going to win the Super Bowl. Will it be the Patriots or the Falcons? You'll just have to find out, and you'll have to listen to the Roto Analysis. So guys, I wish you a great day. Catch you tomorrow. Be well. Take care. Thanks for listening to the Scout Fantasy Show. There's never been a better time to join the Scout Army. Visit ScoutFantasy.com. Use the promo ROTO for two months free. And don't forget, fantasy players, please thumbs up the podcast on the iHeart app. 
See you next time. Go Scouts!